record this and see if this works. This is a regular, a recursive regular expression. Ah, this okay, so we have the regular expression. So we have the regular expression. Is I would love to laugh parentheses concatenated with we'll call it R concatenated with right parentheses. Exactly. So is this a regular expression? Um, I think it is. But are you allowed to do a recursive call in a regular expression? No. Like a problem. Okay. Yes. So that's why. Yeah. The idea is um, you can't. Um, I don't know if it's a factor. So it, it can be a little confusing because we've used definitions of regular expressions, right? We said uh, what a digit digit uh, -I -I right is basically zero through nine, yeah. right? And we said a num is like a digit, a P digit, right? We did this. But the idea here is each of these is a finite regular expression. It's, it's definitions in the mathematical sense where you could just take whatever that regular expression is, put it right in there, and it's exactly the same thing. Uh, same thing with the homework, right? When we use previous regular expressions, we're using those exactly. So even though we can say P digit star, uh, the problem, and this is exactly the problem with regular expressions, is we, we have no way of how to um, use this, I don't know, num star or something like that. Right, so that, so remember when we defined the language described by a regular expression based on all the different cases? Uh, we said like the language is defined by, this language defined by like r star uh, is equal to, oh no, I'm testing myself. I think it's the summation of like l i's of the i's of r, something like that. Um, so if you did this, you'd end up with an infinite definition that's never going to finish. So yeah, it's not, it's not a regular expression. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Because yeah, that's, so essentially, basically, if you think about it, kind of um, context-free grammars are essentially that. Yeah, because uh, I. But it's the interesting part is once you add that one feature, now everything. I wasn't the only. You. You have something that's fundamentally more complicated and different. I can get things that regular expressions can't, but you have to pay for it with a little bit more. Uh, it's not as fast or efficient as regular expressions. So just saying, you're saying like the recursive feature is what makes it more powerful. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a question about the homework. Sure. I was looking at question you two, um, you where you're given the regular expression R0, R1, R2, R2. R2. and then um, it's the very last one where you're given a giant like, you have P -hash string of numbers like the nine, one zero, and nine. Zero. Um, My question so was, when I was reading it, it said that you something similar. kept calling the get token function. So my question was, is it calling it on every Every single item one at a time, or is it calling it to where it'll find like one of the um, regular expressions, and then once it fails all of them, it goes on to call it again? Or yeah. ah, so it follows. The basic idea is it's following uh, what we did. The example that we did in class with the table and everything. Right? So it is. Yeah, it's trying to get. Uh, Everything. So this is basically what you're doing. So the idea is, when you first call get token, right? It works on the whole string, and it tries to go through the string to find out what's the longest token that matches the input string. Okay. And that, this is why we use this to figure that out. Okay. Then once we've decided, like that's when we get here. We say, okay, decimal of three is the longest. We return that, and we say, okay, the first token returned is decimal. Okay. And then the next call on get token basically gets rid of all. Everything that we matched and starts right after that okay. as if it's like a new string and does right. the same thing over and over again. Okay, because I I, when I was reading the homework, it's that's what I was line. thinking it would do because mm -hmm. that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. But just I the, when that. I was reading yeah. the wording of it, I was just like, it's like about 445. it would just seem slightly off to me and maybe it was, you know, you doing it at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> that also could be a problem. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you should check that out. Uh, you can see the stuff where I did in class kind of going over it. It's the exact same thing right there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Want to check my logic? Sure. Oh, the hex no. function here. Checking his logic too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm eavesdropping on. Yes. Wow. <laughs> All right. Have fun, guys. So I defined a couple things. Mm -hmm. um, empty. Our version of um, p digit mm -hmm. digits in the in like a header. So 
How I'd understood it, a hex function had to be the header followed by any other digits except for running zeros. Which, mm -hmm. So more than one zero wasn't allowed, essentially. So I was thinking you'd have a header, had to be concatenated with um, a digit, one through, you know, mm -hmm. hex characters, and then followed by any number of zero plus those. Mm -hmm. Or it could be one zero followed by the, the header. What about, is there any thing that cases I'm missing? Well, what's a valid hex value? So, is this a valid hex value? One, two, three, four? Yes. As far as I know. Uh, is this a valid hex value? Yes. I would say so. Is that a valid hex value? No. Uh, I think so. Did, I don't know. Did you define your hexes as being okay with open? What would make it not a valid hex file? A hex number? Uh, is this a valid hex value? So let's say. <coughs> no. No. G is not Jeez. part of hex. Oh, well, I guess you have to define it as all lowercase or all uppercase. So you can't have, you can't mix them, mix and match per se. Yeah, so you want to make sure, right, that, you know, uppercase, lower, to hex doesn't matter. It's an A or a B, right? It doesn't matter. As long as you just define it as one way or the other, uppercase or lowercase. So should we, do, should, that's actually a really good question. Should we define for both uppercase and lowercase, or is one fine? I would say both. Okay. I think it's more correct, right? It's fine. So, so, just, so just do exactly this, put a big bar there, define another set that contains the lowercase stuff, and do literally the exact same thing, one or the other. But you can't mix and match in the same thing, though. Why can't you? So I could have like a... Is that a valid value? Uh, is that a valid hex value? Do you not know how to interpret this But I'm saying, I'm saying define, define hex as... I mean, I, I have an idea of how to stuff. But like I thought, like you couldn't define syntactically like a lowercase with an uppercase because that wouldn't mean different things. I don't know. If all you care about is the character, it doesn't matter. Okay. So we'll say that's valid for our purposes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. You should, you know, you should put that and state your assumptions, right? That okay. Valid. So is there any other cases that I might need to look at here? So more than I want to just ask, make sure more than one zero so is wait, not valid. So that that is valid. Yep. So lowercase and uppercase sure. the same one is valid. Oh, okay, that complicates things. Uh, what about does that match regular expression? Um, no, nah, because we'll hit that case. So any more than one zero though? Perfect. No good. Okay. That's valid. So wait, so because you can do lowercase and uppercase in your language, you have, don't you in your language that you have to define it as a valid you know, character has to be either uppercase or lowercase, but it can't have be both at the same time. Yeah, well, we, we, we said it could be both here. Oh yeah, I guess you could What's do the it. Difference? So yeah. I guess the question that you gotta ask yourself, right, is can I, so you gotta think about it from the compiler's perspective, right, or from the, the program interpreter's right. perspective. Can I take this hex value and interpret it as a base 16 number so that I can do some computation? I mean, if I was looking at it and I just saw that, I wouldn't question it. So, that. so your compiler should support that. What about? I, if I am my compiler, then yes. What about that? that match? Yes. No, that wouldn't, that wouldn't match what I have, I don't think. Technically, that, that's a hex? Is that, is that a valid number? Would you say that's a valid number? Mm, tricky. This one's tricky because. Um, I mean, they're both right. I mean, it's the same. <coughs> it's the same is... principle behind this, right? Right. I thought we said like the whole num thing. You weren't allowed to do the trailing yeah. zeros, so yeah. we just find that as not valid. That that would be leading zeros. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So we're going with no on that one, right? Correct. I would. Yeah. Okay. okay. That that follows much more closely with what we've been doing in class, right? Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Cool beans. All right. Cool. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. So, so we shouldn't have the leading zeros. Uh, you should, yeah, you should follow the uh, kind of what we've been doing in class. So yeah, so something like, right? So like in class when we define regular expressions to match a number, right? We said this is in there. Ah, uh, typed up. This is not in there. We want to prevent that. So the same thing applies. Yeah. So you can type that here. Okay. Oh, somebody touched it. Sorry. What are you doing? It's purple. 
Okay, so that's an X. Zero, kind of zero, 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 zero is not valid, right? Correct. Very yeah. nice. Uh, but the zero, zero is valid. Yes. What did you, what did you talk about? Sure. I have a question on uh, 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 the Sure. So, is, 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 the, is this string uh, part of language alpha? Mm -hmm. So, it could be due to uh, if I turned it in tomorrow. I sure. I don't know the numbers exactly, but. 224-24-CD. Right. And it fulfilled the, the, the language requirement for the expression, mm -hmm. but then there was a string left over. So is it part of the language in union with a different, with, with the cracking bar? It's like language of alpha, what is it? And then Sorry, it's one of the answers, but. Uh, that's good. Uh, so I guess in general, right, so when you're trying to answer this question, right, like is it an element of or is it not an element of, right? right. So the idea is, um, you know, one way to think about it is we defined, like, right, explicitly how a language defined by R is calculated, right? That set is a bunch of strings. So the question is, is this string <coughs> in this set of strings here? So let's say it's, I don't know, A, A, B, right? And I have in the language defined by R, I have um, the string AA, right? Right. Um, so let's say R here is just the reg expression A dot A, right? So the only string in there is AA. So if you were to say, is uh, AAB an element of the language defined by R? I would say, yeah. Yeah? Because. Language, oh, sorry. I guess if it would be like get token. Ah, okay. Yes, that's. That's different. Yeah, you got it. Okay. That, that. So, yes, it has the potential. <laughs> Coming up from that's more talking about yeah. Yeah. I just haven't touched this yet. So, uh, like, have bad, I matched what I've seen so far of the string? Sure. Does it match something in the regular expression? Oh, I know. So, like the entire um, time as I was going through it, mm -hmm. it matched alpha. Slash tonight, slash tomorrow. It belonged to alpha. Um, like, but once I got to the end, uh, the last character. I have like 30 more minutes on the 445. Uh, I have to clean up my code. It, uh, it wouldn't match alpha. Sure what was your first assignment? Exactly. exactly. So, okay, here's. I know we just ask him. Right. Our first assignment was to develop the language of alpha. Oh, that's really Technically, it would be language of alpha. I have most of my functions. I mean, I need to do Ah, okay, yeah. So, okay, so this is the thing. So, when you're answering these type of questions, right? So, is it an element of the language defined by R? Right. So, the way you got to think about it is exactly like this. So, we have R is a dot a. We know the language defined by R is the set containing just the string a a. Right. So, right now, this is just a set question, right? Like, is the string a a b in this set? It's, it's not. It's definitely not in there, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, that's what this thing is. Is that string possibly in that set? Um, and that's just. And this is what regular. This is like regular expression matching. Like, does this match this regular expression exactly? Right. When we're doing the table. Uh, to do longest prefix matching, yes, that's where it does get, because potential means, is it, so this has the AAB, right? Those are, actually, AAB does not have the potential to match the regular expression AA, right? Because it have the potential, it's got to match all of it. Um, but the, probably what is, is happening, right, is you're thinking about, okay, if I'm just looking at AA, right, that has the potential to match uh, the language, the regular expression a dot a, right? Well, that's it. We're considering white space as a. There's no white space here. A a b. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So just don't worry about the white space. It doesn't right. matter in this case. Yeah. So this. Yeah. So you just have to. So this is why when we do the tables, right, we step through it string at a time, and at each point, right. So here we're only looking at the string one dot, right? And saying, okay, does it have the potential to match any of the tokens? Yeah, yeah we don't look ahead. That's why we do this step by step, so that way it's very clear. Yeah. So in the vein of that question. Sure. Um, you already had one. Oh, somebody else. Sure, go ahead. And, um, so you already I had one too, didn't you? No? Sorry. No, I was just going to make something really quick. But for this, like, would this be a proper <laughs> way to show our work for these questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's good. Because I know you're saying it's like, well, sometimes you use a lot of um, uh, long speed text. That's mm -hmm. what I think that shows what you were talking about, like this entire time. Yeah. It matched alpha, and then you get to the end, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. So 
It's good. Thanks. Questions? Yeah. Sure. Um, I have a question on the one. Do you mind if I use your phone? Is that the print one? Sure. Uh, so what is the difference, if you don't mind explaining a little bit, what is the difference between this parentheses, so full um, star or bar star, and then everything star, mm -hmm. versus if you would have had full or bar star? Mm. And then what if you have full star or bar star without the star for the parentheses? Like there's three different parentheses that are kind of confusing, you know? Got it. So you mean? So yeah, yeah. So that. So that is the first one. So then it basically says that you can have. So what does this? Yeah, what does this mean? Let's let's parse it. So yes, what does this and, mean? Then, and then the third one would be like full star or bar star. Got it. Without a star for the parentheses. I just want to go over yeah, those yeah. as general ones. Cool. So right. I think I understand, but I just want to double check with you. Cool. So full star or bar star, everything star means you can have any combination of full is repeated and bar repeated and that combination is repeated. Right? Exactly. So then you would have, you could have foo foo, bar bar, and then that would, that would be repeated. Yep, and then so foo then, bar, foo bar, foo bar. So then, so but it doesn't have to be that exact combination, right? The star just means zero or more right. of so that then, regular so expression. Then, so then in that case, in the case of that parentheses, could you have foo as a valid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? so foo matches, right? So if you think about it, right, we take this once, uh, foo, matches foo matches this, if this is one, this goes to zero. We don't repeat anymore. Exactly. And, and then foo foo would be a valid one. Yep. Okay. All three of those mean the same thing. Exactly. Mm. Mm, uh, not really. We'll get there, almost. So foo. Um, this actually maybe was going to be your homework assignment, but see that, see, <laughs> I couldn't figure that, out how to prove it because like, I don't want to get into proofs. Um, so let's you, think about this one now, right? Let's think about this one. Foo or bar star, right? Right. So what so does this pretty mean? pretty much you have foo, but you, instead of taking it multiple times, you only take it once. Mm -hmm. but, but you could potentially have it just once or bar once, and then you can repeat it. Exactly. Wait, so you take... Can it be like yes. foo bar foo? So... Is it like... Okay. I was so this is any this. number of foos or bars. Zero or more foos or bars. Or so then, or it wouldn't it have the potential to just give the same string as? So then, in that case, he's like in that case. If we take his answer and say they're the same, or well you can potentially have for both of them, you can have foo foo bar bar, right? Like foo foo bar bar, right? Mm -hmm. And they they're gonna be valid for both of them, right? So is this string in the language defined by this regular expression? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so we have foo any number of times, bar any number of times. This yes. goes once, that matches. Here we have, uh, for the first character, matches the foo. And then we can have <coughs> any more foo or bars, this matches a foo. Uh, any more foo or bars, this matches a bar. Any more foo or bars, this matches a bar. So yeah, exactly. can you give an example of well, they a string match. that wouldn't match the second one, or that's different for the first or the second one? I don't think so. So they are the same. So, I'm See, so this is the thing. I'm pretty sure they're equivalent, but I can't prove it. I, okay. I was actually gonna. That was gonna be your third homework problem. Was uh, prove that these are equivalent, but yeah. to prove that's hard. that regular expressions are equivalent, you have to do like set equivalents and mm. subsets and all that stuff. It's a bunch I, of stuff we don't yeah, go into. Yeah, so. I thought about it and I was like, okay, in explanation, they're not the same, but in practice, they're the same. Because if you explain them, yeah, I, yeah, it sound it doesn't sound the same, but then if you write them exactly. out, it actually sounds the same. Yes, I'm. Yeah. I'm fairly certain they're I think the, the same. major difference would actually just be the empty string because the top one has the potential to use it. Mm. The, the second one, one. The second one is too. I mean, you can use it for both. The foo or bar or not. Right, so if this is zero or more, what is this string going to produce? The thing is, just each of epsilon. the foo bar and star bar, or bar, that bar star. Foo star or bar star, yeah. Foo star or bar star, they have the potential to be the empty string, so you could get empty string, empty string, bar, empty string, and it could be a combination using the empty string within it. Whereas the bottom one, it would have to be a foo or a bar, and you couldn't have an empty string mixed. Uh, yes, but the when we define the language of a regular expression, right, it's just strings, and we simplify it down yeah, to it get rid of all like epsilon spaces. I, yeah. I don't think it was um, just a semantic. Yeah, would it, would it matter? So based off his question, would it matter if you had empty string, empty string bar versus empty string doesn't even count, right? If if you take it in I think a string, it's, I th so I think the technical like the theory definition is because we define the identity of a string concatenated with epsilon is the same thing as that string itself, right, right. then those would be the so same would, sets. Logically, it doesn't change what it is, go but go. when you actually, I'm also work. applying what I've been learning in 355, yeah, uh -huh. it does technically change the definition of the string. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. According to 50, 355, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I think in practice, that's why I don't want to make any claims that it definitely does or definitely yeah. does not. So then, so then the third one, so the third one, then what does this mean? 
pretty much what it mean, what the first one means without the repeated part. Actually, so no. But what does it mean? You can't mix and match. So them. it's so it's full full any full string repeatedly or any bar. Right. So is repeatedly. is foo foo yeah, bar bar is. in there? It is. Right. So. But the mm. thing, you wouldn't be able to do foo bar yeah. foo bar, would you? This string in here? Yes, you could. Yeah. I you could do foo bar. Well, yeah, it has to be one or the other, so it has to be all foos. Zero, zero more foos or zero more bars, wouldn't it be? Because you have to do either a foo or a bar. It has to be zero or as many as you want of a foo or a bar. No? Yeah, let's break it down. I think it's the same. Right? Yes. This is right? Yes. We get that transform into there? Yes. Um, so what's the language, what's this look like? What's the language of foo star? Look like that set. So MP string and then string and foo, 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 foo from foo one representation to an yeah. infinite yeah. number. Right, bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Okay. And then the language described by bar star? Same as above. The empty string and then the iteration mm -hmm. from one to infinity of bar. Right? What happens when you union these sets? What's the language of these empty two sets set union? Bar. I mean, yeah. No, no, union. Oh, union. Oh, my bad. So no, it's just a food that, oh, food but that would not be concatenation, food. would it? Bar, and then you have foo, bar. foo, foo bar, bar. Can you have foo, foo, foo and It doesn't mix them the same way the top hmm? one did. Can you have foo, foo, one bar? Mm. What's set union do? It does not it concatenate. It just takes all the elements. Takes all yeah, the elements and puts them together. It, it does not do concatenation, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, so this is, you know, foo, foo, foo. Right, so then the question is, is uh, foo, f shoot. So can you have three foos in one bar or no? No. So is that in that set? You can have three foos nope. in one bar, yeah. You, you, can, you can have, yes it is. You can yeah. Foo, foo, bar, bar? It's no, not it's all not. one. It's, it's is it in, so here's it's the other thing to think about it, right? It's is it in either of these sets? Is foo, foo, bar, bar in the language described by foo star or the language described by bar star? No. Nope. And exactly right, and this is union, so it just takes the sets and makes a big set out of both of them, right? So it's not doing any concatenations or anything like that. It just says it can be either. So it can be it, it, okay. I understand. So it can yeah, either the, be foo foo or bar bar. Exactly. But it cannot, it yeah. cannot be. It yes. Allow that to mix. Yes. Okay. That's exactly what this or says. Is this or says okay? It can either be any number of foos, zero or more foos, okay. or zero it can bars. be zero or more bars. Okay, but not together. Exactly. Okay. Start. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The the last one. The last one. I thought they were the same. Uh, actually, I think they counted really bad. Was it an orgy? Uh, I've yeah. recorded it, so I'll post it. Okay. Yeah, I was confused with that too. Sweet. Cool. Any other quick questions? I gotta go to class. Yeah. Okay. So these are considered greedy when you're running them, right? Like these regular expressions. Um, tricky. You're on. So you keep talking and I'll tell you okay. if that's correct or not. So I'll start with my, there's two assumptions, two qu versions of it, but I'll start with R2. If you're given 0, 1, 1, that would all fit into the first part of 0, 1 star. Mm -hmm. But it would also match if you went 0, 1, 1. So that could be a matching and a potential. Got it. So, <clears throat> yes. So the idea is, right, so remember what you're talking about is, well, potential or match. Okay, so it could be both how I sort of see it, depending on if you look at it as greedy or not. Correct. So matching right just says, is it in, so it's exactly what we've been doing here. Is yeah. that string exactly in the language defined by um, that regular expression? Mm -hmm. So the idea here is for matching, right, so in this language described by this regular expression, there's going to be every possible combination of applying, you know, zero or mores and concatenations and ors, all that stuff is going to be in there. Yeah. So matching just means, is there one essential path through that regular expression that matches? Just one path. Exactly. It doesn't really matter how you, which path, exactly. as long as yes. there's one. Potential there, says... There could be more. Paths. Is there, yeah, have I matched a prefix? Yeah, can, is, can I still match more characters in there based on so what it's, I have? So it is matching and it's a potential. Exactly. So you, you look to see if it's greedy to see if you can add more to it, but you have to look for a match also at the same yes. time. So in this case, can we, do we have a potential here? On He's what? On, on zero, R, one, one. On yeah. R2? R2, yeah. Because you can fill up the zero and the exactly. one. Exactly. This is zero or one infinitely. So yeah, so that could still match, right? You don't know what's after that, 
So we can say, yeah, we're still in here. We're still matching whatever. So yeah, we still have the potential to keep, we can keep going. You keep giving me zero or ones, I'll keep having a potential to match. So, okay. can I ask uh, another question? Yes. So here, uh, can we have zero, one, one, zero? <coughs> Does it match R2? Mm. If we didn't have this, just this one. Does it match zero, it one, one, zero? It wouldn't zero? be a matching, it'd be a potential then. Wait, wait, if you just, just had, sorry, if you had R2, if you had R2 as zero or one star? Yeah. Uh, so if we have zero or, or it, one. Or is it like you have to have zero, 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 one, one? Or can we have a like combination of zero, one, zero, and one? Right, so the matching question all comes back to what is the set of the language described by <coughs> zero or one star? Right, what does that set look like? First name, last name, age, and then I did a specific button for password and one for Absalom, zero, mm -hmm. zero, zero. Zero, well, okay, yeah, you can have yeah, one zero, button and then zero, zero. So then we got to break this one down. So, uh, yeah, I was trying to break it down. So, you have, on top of it. Oh, that's how you, you have set of zeros and then set of one and then any combination of those. Concatenated, yeah. So, the star operator, right, means repeated, which means concatenation. And that's where you get the concatenations. So, the idea is. It's the same, so this is the same thing as uh, the union, the big union of all of the language described, well, first it's, actually, let's do this. It's epsilon, union with the language described by uh, zero or one, union with the language described by zero or one, concatenated with the language described by zero or one, right? I so you can just go on. Union oh, with, yeah, we oh, keep oh, repeating okay. these concatenations together with whatever's inside the star. Mm -hmm. So then we have the language of zero or one uh, concatenated with the language of zero or one, concatenated with the language of zero or one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to answer my question. Yeah, this so what's the set look like? Wait, let's go back to this. What, what's the set look like then? This resulting set. What are some of the strings in here? So epsilon, right? You already said that yes. from here. So what from this one? What's the language described by one or zero? It would be zero or one. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then what about this one? I'll see you later. Zero, one. So yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. What else? And then it could be zero, one, zero. No, no, from this one. <coughs> well, I don't this. Oh. So one, zero. Yep. What else? From that one? Yeah. Zero, zero, one, one. Zero, zero, one, one, one. Yep. Right, so it's every possible combinations of ones or zeros oh, okay. concatenated together. So any combinations of zero or ones. So then back to your question here, right? Is this going to be in here? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. All right, I got to run, guys. All right. Okay. Thank okay. you. Class.